All right, let's get a slightly bigger problem together here using the blocks. Very simple, very easy still, but just the concept of it. 12 taken 11 times. Can you see that across here, it's 12. One, 10, and two blue ones. We can call this three because these are different. We only count things that are the same. So I have one of these and two of these. 12 across and 11 up. This, this way, this, this way. Well, what do we see here? Well, I can see very easily that I have 100, three tens, and two. But if I just write it that way, uh, Mrs. Crabtree might not be happy with that. She might say that you copied off of somebody's paper. So we need to be able to show our work. So let's show our work very quickly. Now here's a similar problem. 12 taken 13 times. Once again, very simply, all we need to do is be able to count. So 12 taken 13 times. Can I see what's gonna be in each box? Well, to make it a little more clear, simply split and shift here. Now we can see what goes in each box. And I could even do this if I wanted to. Make it absolutely clear for the adults watching. You see now we have the boxes here. They're not quite as perfect, but all I have to do now is count. How many here? Six. How many here? Three. How many here? There's nothing in that box. And then just count them all together. Six. One, two, three, four, five. And one big red one. Twelve taken 13 times, 156. Very simple for small children. Very, very simple for even four and five year old kids to understand. All we're doing is counting. Now, we can teach them as time goes by. Three times two, three times ten. 10 times 2, 10 times 10. Instead of just knowing or using the algorithm, multiply this, multiply this, and a lot of times you'll even hear the child say, 1 times 2, 1 times 1. When actually this is a 10, and this is a 10. Very simple. Now let's go back to division using a familiar set of manipulatives, the sixes we've already seen. Here, we have six taken three times. And here, we have three taken six times. Now, for a small child or a student again, we can count this side, one, two, three. And we can see that this side is one, two, three, four, five, six. Three, six. And here, I see it's six threes. Now, you really can see that the multiplication and division are inverse functions. You can see it very clearly. Here, I have a rectangle. Here, I have a rectangle. The whole rectangle is 18. And on this one, we have six is contained in 18 three times. Here, I have three is contained in 18 six times. Once again, that symbol is just shorthand for rectangle. And children can play games where they put the, a whole bunch of these different blocks, you know, four, sevens, three, fives, put them all over the board, and then they pick up the blocks and write underneath. They write the sides and what's inside. This reinforces their multiplication skills and gives them a thorough understanding of the concept of division. All right, let's take a slightly bigger problem. And in Morrison Math, we always say bigger is funner. It's not good grammar, but bigger is more fun. Now, what I have here is a rectangle, and you'll see that it's built slightly differently than when we were doing multiplication. And there's a reason for this. Once again, a uniform methodology for the visualization of the mathematics. Now, again, all we're doing with mathematics is counting, right? First concept, 
Mathematics is the study of numbers. All we do with numbers is count. Highest number we're going to count to is 9. We only count things that are same. Again, we're just using rectangles to facilitate the counting. We're not even in the, into the concepts of 0 or 1. Now, let's see here. If I have 132 and one side is 12, you can see that this side is 12. We can count it if you're a small child. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Or we can just count one of the blue ones and two of the green ones. And we have quite a few lessons about place value and so forth. But it goes very, very quickly because you'll see that it's pretty redundant. It goes pretty fast. We can see that this is 100. That's what that one means. Three tens and two units. So if I have a rectangle where it's 132 and one side is 12, what must the other side be? Well, any little kid can see that this is one and one of the green ones. Now you remember, and that's it, we're done. But wait, we ha it's, it can't be that easy and we have, to do, we have to show our work. But that's it. Now remember, when we were doing 18, the sixes and the threes, we just counted the edges, three and six. We didn't count the insides. Well, it's the same thing here, where we don't count these two or more here, we just count the edges. If this edge is 12, and actually you can see that this side is also 12, this side is 11, that's it. If this side is 12, this side must be 11. Now, what happens once again when you have to show your work? Well, when we show our work, all we're gonna do is split it a little bit like that, so we can see the difference there. Now, can we see that right here, we have 100 and two tens? 100, two tens, same as 120 in English. What's left on here? Well, I can see there's 12 left. Now, when I count that 12, we're done. It mirrors the work. Now, let's tell that story again giving it some more meaning so that it's not just some algorithm for solving this. And what I see a lot of children do is 12 goes into 13 once. Well, it's not really 12 going into 13, is it? And doing the subtraction, or they just learn multiply, subtract, multiply, subtract. Let's learn the concept of it. Let's think about the concept of division. We're gonna tell a story about Boy Scouts. All right, let's tell a quick story about Boy Scouts. There are 12 Boy Scouts, and they go and pick, I'm from Hawaii, 132 pineapples. How many would each Boy Scout get if the farmer tells them to take them home, divide them up equally and take them home? So let's get out of our pineapples. Here's 100, three tens and two, 132 pineapples. And now I'm actually gonna get the Boy Scouts out. And here we have three of them. All right, here's a bunch of them over here. Look, some of them actually showed up in uniform. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, nobody showed up in uniform. But here's three of them that showed up in uniform. Here's a couple of tall Boy Scouts. Here's a short Boy Scout over here. And now what we have, we have to pass out our pineapples. Can we pass them out one at a time? Oh, that's gonna take forever. We've only got an hour here. So let's see, could we pass them out 10 at a time, maybe? 10, 10, 10. Then I'd have to start breaking up this one. Could pass them out like that, but then I'd have to break this one up to... Fit. All right, so can I pass them out really quickly? Watch this. I can think of a way to pass them out very quickly, just like that. Now, can you see that he gets 10, and this guy gets 10, and the short boy scout over here gets 10, everybody gets 10. How many are left? 12. Are we done passing out pineapple? Well, we still got to pass out these 12 pineapple. Now we can see that each Boy Scout gets 11, 10 and one more. And we can see again that our notation mirrors our manipulatives. Where first we passed out 120 and we had 12 left. We weren't done passing out our pineapples when we had those 12 left. We pass out 12 more and now we're done passing out pineapples. Well, let's take it a step further. What if I had 133 pineapples? Let's get this extra pineapple in there. Well, then you can see 
that instead I would have had 13 left over. And then when I passed out 12 more, I'd have one left. What do we call that? The remainder, it remains outside the rectangle. But this farmer says, well, you can't take any pineapple home unless everybody gets an equal share. Well, the little kids will always say, well, what are we gonna do with this one pineapple? And the little kids will say, eat it, give it to the farmer, throw it away. But no, we want to divide it up equally among all those Boy Scouts. What do we need? Well, little children will tell you, we need a knife. And what do we have to do? We have to take this one pineapple and cut it up into how many pieces? Well, there's 12 Boy Scouts. So of course we have to cut this pineapple into 12 pieces. Now, instead of just putting remainder one there, which is what the first C, we can start getting into fractions. And they can see that it's not, I've seen children do this. Because they couldn't remember which one to put it over because they just learned some memorization technique or some algorithm to solve this. And then they got confused at the very end. And instead of putting 12 there, they put 11. But if you understand the concept of division, we understand that it's that one divided among those 12 Boy Scouts. Division, very simple. Let's move into fractions. 